This week, Stormhaven Studios, the developers behind the MMORPG Embers Adrift, released some excellent information about what lies ahead this year for their game. If you don't know about Embers Adrift, it's a classically spirited, group-centric, open-world MMO that checks all the boxes for those looking for that kind of an experience. We've been playing Embers Adrift here on the channel since it launched over a year ago and enjoying the heck out of it and grouping up, killing some mobs in classic MMO style. So let's take a look at exactly what they have planned for 2024. But quickly before we get to that, co-op gaming is what Static Group Live is all about. So if you like games like Embers Adrift, why not subscribe to the channel while you're here? Thanks in advance and on with the video. So the Embers Adrift 2024 roadmap has three categories in terms of their priority. Immediate, short term, and long term. Basically what order to expect these items to show up in the game rather than any kind of a specific timeline. Let's start with the immediate priority items, so the things that we're going to see first. Now the big one here is the free trial. And I think to really give this context, it is important to first understand the business model that Embers Adrift utilizes. They've been adamantly against any kind of a cash shop since day one, opting for the optional subscription model. They've actually evolved this model over time to make the subscription provide perks as a way to introduce a non-subscription way to play. You see, Embers Adrift is a buy-to-play game, and then you choose if you want to pay a sub, which gives you some perks that don't impact gameplay. Things like extra character slots and bank space, that kind of thing. I personally think it works really well. So this new free trial that's coming in 2024, they advise, will include all the content in the entire first zone, as well as the first dungeon. This will give players a chance to experience the questing, bulletin boards, and solo experience, as well as the grouping experience as they delve into the Central Veins dungeon. They go on to say this is going to be starting around the end of February. So this adds a way to try the game out without paying the box price up front. It's going to bring in a lot of players without a doubt. And what I think Stormhaven Studios is doing here is gambling on themselves, insofar as hoping that the first zone and the dungeon provides a compelling enough experience that people will want to continue their adventures into New Haven City and beyond. And what this means, of course, at least in my opinion, is that they're going to want the game to put its best foot forward. So we'll see some of the development focus on content within that first zone and dungeon. While improvements to the first zone isn't explicitly stated in the roadmap, there is another nod to the new player experience a little later in the newsletter, where the devs mention new encounter tech that will take what some consider endgame content and allow us to offer this type of content to all level ranges throughout the game. To me, that says that the early levels, you'll now be able to do some new things, and that ties in nicely with the free trial edition. But who knows, in any event, I think seeing the first zone really expanded upon and enhancing the new player experience will be a good thing, whatever form that takes. Part of that development is the next item on the roadmap, their bulletin board system. No, it's not a new dial-up message board circa 1996, it's actually an in-game feature. Here's what they have to say about it. These bulletin boards offer tasks that are completely soloable, and they offer experience as a reward, as well as a health regen buff to help with further soloing and grouping. This is juxtaposed to our quests, which usually have at least one objective that requires grouping, and offers valuable items as rewards as opposed to experience. These tasks are not dailies. Players can do as many as they like, and they give players even more valuable objectives to complete while the group forms, or if they don't have time for a longer group session, but still want to log in and play. So the context you need to understand here is that Embers Adrift is a group-centric game. Since their launch, it's become evident that they're being very mindful of trying to walk that fine line of trying to provide accessible content for those that might not have time for a group without overriding its underlying social foundations. These bulletin boards are actually a very interesting addition to the game. The devs are clear that these are not dailies, which <laughs> I chuckled when I read. You mean people don't like the manipulative login metric generators that are dailies in modern MMOs? Anyway, the difference here is that these bulletin board tasks can be continually done over and over as a way of doing something productive while either the group gets its stuff together or you're just feeling like a quiet night of solo MMOing. It's not just a to-do list that you feel compelled to check off. Rather, it's an option that complements the grouping experience. I do think it's interesting that they chose to offer XP rewards for these tasks, whereas the quests that are in the game right now don't give XP, but rather high-end items for the most part. 
I'm guessing the XP has to be pretty low so it doesn't disincentivize grouping. The other part of their plan is to continue to implement what they call solo loops in current dungeons in the games. This is expanding on an already existing feature that, in my opinion, is a really clever way to build solo content within the open world that feels organic and fair. Basically, as the name implies, these solo loops offer a less challenging path in the dungeon that isn't as rewarding in terms of XP or loot, but also isn't pointless. I've commented on this before in some of our previous videos when we've streamed Embers Adrift, and I'm glad to see them expanding their usage. In fact, they say they want every dungeon to offer a solo loop, as well as note that the loot that currently exists is actually gaining some notoriety amongst the player base. From my experience, I haven't seen any indication that this has people opting to solo rather than group up, so the devs do seem to have found that balance with these solo loops. Those are the main items under the immediate category, but it's also worth mentioning it lists some new GM event improvements and secret stuff. I've participated in some of their GM events, and the Sunday market fairs, I can tell you, are usually a really good time. As for secret stuff, well, I enjoy both secrets and stuff, so I'm here for it. The short-term goals they've listed are certainly headlined by the addition of epic quests. The update says these are already completed, as are their unique weapon art, but we are waiting for certain zones to come into the game that these quests will send you to. So obviously the first thing I noticed was weapon art, which confirms the rewards for these epic quests will be weapons. Of course, everyone has their epic weapon tale from past MMOs, so Embers Adrift is continuing this tradition. They could have tried to iterate here perhaps and included armor, but maybe that will be a down the road thing. Either way, this is great news. Epic quests make MMOs feel bigger, grander, and well, more epic. The holdup on getting these into the game is the zones they take place in need to be brought online. They add, this is also the holdup for the next item, Discover the Others. They don't say exactly what it is, but it sounds like a quest to me. On a lore side note, Others in Embers Adrift, although we don't know because we haven't discovered them, are generally referenced as this mysterious precursor. The zones in question may be the ones listed on the graphic, although, again, that isn't explicitly stated, but Dryfoot Fortress, Grizzled Peaks 2, and Forgotten Depth 3 are in the queue for 2024. If they follow their namesakes, which are already in game, these will be level 20 plus zones, but I could be assuming incorrectly. Back to the solo additions to Embers Adrift, the devs note fishing is coming in 2024. There's no details listed about how it's going to work, but I mean, how complicated can fishing be? As long as I can fish up an old boot, I'll give it a try. Fishing in MMOs holds this weird place of esteem as a traditionally less meaningful, but wholly fun activity. It's gonna draw some more players in, that's for sure. Over the last year or so, there's been quite a few new mob models and more challenging creatures added into Embers Adrift. And the devs add this will continue into the new year. One thing I noticed was the new skull tier bosses they mentioned. As it stands, Embers Adrift uses a chevron ranking to indicate the challenge of the creature, with the max being four. The range is basically solo, duo or trio, full group, and then multiple group tuned mobs. Skull tier, to me, says raid mobs, but again, don't quote me on this. Perhaps they're just mobs with uniquely tough mechanics or some sort of quest related mobs, who knows. The long-term items on the roadmap have the least amount of detail attached to them as you would expect, but they're also not insignificant. The two that stand out to me are the mail system and the new weather tech. First, on the addition of a mail system, I'll say this has been desperately needed since launch. The economy in Embers Adrift is a healthy one, from what I've seen, with appropriately powerful and rare stuff fetching pretty good prices and having prestige attached to them. The problem has been getting the items to other people, as you always have to meet up with them in-game to do the transaction. I would assume any mail system that's going to allow items to be sent to other players at outposts out in the wilds. Remember, Embers Adrift has only one city with the essential services of a bank and crafting stations and certain types of vendors. You have to be in New Haven City to access them, so people generally gather there for in-person trade markets right now. This can be fairly time-consuming the way it's set up. So with this new mail system, if you have a friend, let's say you just want to give an item to, this is going to allow for that. It'll also allow for some decentralization of the economy, 
but doesn't go as far as an auction house would. And that's a good change in my mind. The addition of enhanced weather tech is something that I think will feel pretty good when they get it in the game. I find Embers Adrift to have an excellent combination of visuals and music, and it always evokes an emotional response when I'm out just exploring in the zones. The addition of weather will push this even farther. It might be thunderstorms or blizzards. They don't say what exactly it is, but if it's anything like the fog that's actually already in the game, it's going to be a challenge to deal with as well as being aesthetically pleasing. The news wraps up with some highlights from the most recent patch notes, which includes significant changes to the Marshall class, adjustments to XP from certain mob types, and some behind the scenes tech upgrades to the game. It's also worth mentioning that a lot of the changes they're implementing come from player feedback, in particular the increased solo accessibility that's been noted throughout. As I said at the outset, we've been playing Embers of Drift since launch. In fact, you can catch us playing every Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Central Time right here on the channel during the MMORPG 201 show. All that to say, this game has certainly come a long way in that time, and it continues to grow. It's great to see an indie dev team like Stormhaven Studios find success, as they're a hard-working and very talented team. Oh, and did I mention that Embers of Drift recently won Indie MMORPG of the Year on the Scuffed Game Awards? You can check that out right here. I do recommend supporting Embers of Drift and their design philosophy, but of course, that's just my perspective. What do you think? Have you tried Embers of Drift or considered giving it a shot? Do the items on the roadmap interest you? And if so, which ones? Let me know in the comments. And until next time, cheers, and thanks for watching.